Hi, I'm Mateusz from Board Game Colors, and today we're gonna play with some fire. As I promised, I'm going to make three different fire inspired bases from scratch. First one will be super fast and easy. Second will require a little gluing and simple paint job. And the third one will be a little bit more complicated. Oh, and I am giving those bases away, so stick with me till the end of the video. Okay, let's start with 25mm base. Long ago, when I started my journey with painting, I was inspired with cracked earth with lava glowing underneath it. And today I feel it is one of the easiest bases to make. I started by applying matte varnish onto the surface, because I don't like its rugged finish. Here you can see it already dry. Now I'm going to use Citadel Agrelan Earth, but any cracking medium will do. Most miniature hobby paint brands have at least one of those. I took a big blob and smeared it on a base surface with a stick that was once a brush. This layer needs to be a really thick to work. I usually aim for at least 1mm. Spread it out like butter, but you don't need to do it evenly. A rough surface looks more natural. Now we let it rest for a few hours. Let's watch how a paint dries. I usually leave Agrellan Earth to dry overnight, but if you're in hurry you need to wait at least an hour or two. One super important tip here. Don't use your good brush to apply this product. You will simply damage the bristles. While it dries I will prepare the second base. This time I will use 32mm GW base. Other than that you will need wood glue. Milliput and 2mm cork sheet. In my case, I am using cup coasters I bought in some random store. I started by drawing a base shape on the cork and cutting it with scalpel. Then I drew where I want my lava river to be and again cut it out, this time leaving a little rougher surface. I also cut a small piece and use it as a rock in the middle of the stream. I used a pair of tweezers to roughen up a surface and the river edges a little bit. When I was satisfied, I glued all the pieces to the base with wood glue. I probably should have done this earlier, but I also drew some areas I want to be flat, so you have some space to attach your mini's foot. Everywhere else I glued some tiny rocks made from cork leftovers. Last but not least, for the lava effect to work we need something tiny near the edge, so we can paint some lights from below later on. I had some schools from a friend, so I glued one of them near the edge. I was happy with the result, so I left it for about 3 hours so the glue might bind. After that time I used some milliput and pushed it into the riverbed. You can see me using this funny tool. It is a part of a cheap set of confectionery sculpting tools I bought for a euro or two. But seriously, you can just use the back end of your brush and pointy stick. One important thing, dip your tools in water before use. Otherwise, milliput will stick to them in step to the base. When I was happy with the shape, I used some glass beads and pushed them into the milliput. They will imitate bubbles later on. For some final touches I glued some wooden splinters in front of the lava river, but I removed most of them later on. Ok, now let it dry overnight. Milliput needs several hours to completely dry. Now let's prepare the third base. We will start with some milliput as well, but I think I should explain to you better how to use it. Milliput is a two-component sculpting material, similar to green stuff or plasticine. Before you start, prepare a paper towel and a bowl of water. 
Now I take two approximately even pieces of both components. Put my fingers in water and knead them together until they are evenly mixed. Then I spread it on the base as evenly as I can. I want it to be flat, so I moisten a putty, put a piece of foil on its top and roll it with the bottle until it's even. I let it dry for half an hour and cut an even base rim with a scalpel. Three hours later I'm back to sculpt pavement bricks. First I used a wallpaper knife to cut a groove. I made two cuts on both sides of drawn lines and removed the material between them. Afterward I used my scalpel to cut shorter grooves around the bricks and added some cracks and damage. With this part ready I proceeded with building a wall. I used a piece of foam from a toy sword, but you can use any EVA foam you find. It is a nice material for basing, but you need to remember that even after painting it will remain elastic. I started by cutting the general shape and sculpted bricks basically the same way as I did with a milliput. The difference is that foam is very soft, so you need a very sharp knife or a scalpel to cut through it. I did it all with some help from Furcot the Cat. He also told me he in his magnificence will pour ones for all the people who will like this video. I've cut out some bricks and damaged them by removing small pieces of foam with tweezers. Just don't overdo it. They still need to look like bricks later on. I also broke some small pieces of wooden lath and glued all the stuff together with a wood glue. Generally I wanted to have a wall with a pile of rubble underneath. I probably should do it earlier, but I also used a hobby drill to create some bullet holes in the wall. Finally I applied some wood glue here and there and sprinkled it with sand. I also painted over the foam with mud varnish to even out a porous surface. I waited overnight, letting them dry completely. The next day I started by priming them with spray paints. The first two in pure white, cause I wanted to paint strong yellow and orange colors on them, and the third in dark grey, so I have less work with an ash and stone. If you want to learn some really useful tips and tricks about spray cans, Marco Frissoni recently did an exemplary tutorial on this topic. Link here and in the description. Let's start with Cracked Earth. I'm going to use red and yellow inks from scale 75. I mixed three different tones of orange and started painting. First I picked a spot where the cracks were biggest and poured yellow ink into them. I am using an old brush with damaged tip. Avoid using your best brushes with inks, washes and other fluid paints. It's easy to damage them if you load too much. Check out how I'm moving my brush. I'm trying to soak the paint into the cracks. Next I'm adding darker and darker orange and red around the yellow, but when I see that yellow gets darker, I'll simply add a drop of it in the middle. This way I'm getting a nice transition over the whole base. When I'm happy, I let it dry. When it was ready I mixed a dark brown color from Citadel Dumbul Brown in scale color black leather and bite it over all the raised earth. I added some black to the mix and painted in the middle of those spots and finally added some small dots with pure black. 
You could probably make this step faster by simply dry brushing over the base with a dark color, but from my experience I can tell you that you will lose some of the final quality. Now let's proceed with the second base. I found some reference photos and noticed that lava rivers are brightest on the sides with some random bright streams all around. So I started with same yellow and red inks, but you can skip it, it wasn't really worth it. The only important part here was to pour some yellow colors to the sides of the lava flow and to paint orange in the middle for now. I did what I did, so while waiting for inks to dry, I painted the ground in front of the river with some random mix of brown and grey. And all other rocks with a mix of Chimera colors violet and scale color abyssal blue. I used dark violet here to increase the contrast of the base. Violet is a complementary color to the yellow, and knowing that, if I paint shadow areas with it, the lava will look brighter. But don't worry, you won't see it as a violet later on. Now back to the lava. I started with orange in the middle, but you need to know one important thing here. You need to be fast and work with paint still wet on the later stages. I started by adding some random yellow dots and lines to the orange, frequently cleaning the brush. I changed it with orange when I felt it was too bright, and so on so forth. Then I started adding some dark brown in the middle to create a look of a colder lava, but it was too dark, so I painted over it with a red ink and let it dry. It looks dirty, but just wait for the next step. I painted over it with diluted red, leaving the sides yellow. Then I used orange, but left the bubbles red. Then I highlighted bubbles and painted some random small curvy yellow lines and dots to suggest the flow. I know this part is a lot and you surely could skip some steps, but I wanted to use red and yellow paint poor coverage to add a lot of texture and visual interest to the lava. You probably noticed that I made sides of the rocks orange and yellow as well, but with the dark recesses. That was intentional. I wanted to create an illusion of illumination. An important rule here is that the light is brighter near the lava and the more orange and red farther it goes. But also a little random, lava isn't an even source of light. Next I dry brushed rocks with very dark brown, then mix of it with grey, and finally pure grey. Each subsequent step with a drier and drier brush. I washed over it with a lot of Citadel Nuln oil, watching out not to go over the yellow parts. Finally, I painted the school with dark grey mixed with brown and highlighted it from the bottom with orange and yellow. I wanted the final base to be war themed. Fire is almost extinguished, only ashes remain. I started by painting all recesses and hidden areas with a mix of black and violet. When it was dry, I proceeded with dry brushing. First I dry brushed pavement with abyssal blue then wall and bricks with black leather. In both cases my brush wasn't really dry. Next I mixed some grey with abyssal blue and some dumble brown with black leather and dry brushed again, this time with much less paint on the brush. Finally I did it again with only grey and brown, just with a tiny bit of paint on the brush. Next, I painted all wooden pieces black. I want it to look already burned, so I started by painting patches of ash on it with dark grey and added some additional lines and dot with light grey. When it was done, I washed it with brown wash. 
I let it dry and used orange to paint small dots between patches of ash and on the top. When I felt a need to load the brush again, I painted with it on the lit areas instead, thus starting to create a little OSL effect. Next I mixed orange with yellow and did the same steps again, only with smaller dots. Finally, I added a few tiny points of yellow in the biggest dots and on the top of the logs. I also dry brushed all the sand with bright grey and corrected some OSL effects. A good tip here is to have just a tiny bit of paint on the brush, so it won't flow over the touched areas, completely destroying the effect. You just want a delicate indication of fire. Lastly, I wanted to create something special, to add some kind of the story to this base. I took a small sheet of paper and started sketching a revolutionary poster, first with a pencil, then with red and black paint. Lastly, I used a sepia wash and a little brown wash to age it a little bit. I cut it to the size and used tweezers to tear some pieces of it. Next, I glued it to the wall and painted all the torn edges with black, and added some orange and yellow dots to simulate a fire. And here they are. One super quick and simple, one with flashy OSL, and one to tell the story. And you know what? I'm giving those away. I'll send them all to one of you who writes a comment that gets most likes in a week. For more details, check out the description down below. So let me know, which one of those bases do you like the most? What type of figure would you put on it? Also, if you found this video useful or entertaining, please spread a good word. It will help me immensely to be more visible to Uncle YouTube, or maybe even make friends with the algorithm. With that said, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!